Out of Sight, Out of Mind is about using Native American survival skills, wearing the appropriate clothing, either to be seen or not. Native American Indians hunted, killed, and butchered the animals, which not only fed them, but clothed them using their hides. These hides used for clothing blended well in their environment. In pre-Columbian America, the American bison, also now referred to American buffalo or simply buffalo, its historical range by 9000 BC is described by our Native American ancestors as the Great Bison Belt being a track of rich grassland that ran from Alaska, parts of Canada, to the southwest, the Gulf of Mexico, east to the Atlantic seaboard, nearly to the Atlantic tidewater in some areas, then as far north as New York, south to Georgia, near North Carolina, near Buffalo Ford, on the Catawba River, as late as the 1750s, further south to Florida. This bison roamed in vast herds with a population in excess of 60 million in the late 18th century. Two subspecies or ecotypes are described. One, the plains bison, the smaller in size with a more rounded hump, and then the wood bison is one of the largest wild species extant bovide in the world. Samuel Day Champlain applied the term buffalo, buffles in French, to the bison in 1616. He published in 1619. shown to him by members of the Nipissing First Nation who said they traveled 40 days from east of Lake Huron to trade with another nation who, who hunted the animals. The wood bison are the bulls that average 1,800 pounds and they are taller with a square hump. They are darker in color. The plains bison the bulls average 1,600 pounds, and they're stockier with a rounded hump. They are lighter in color. This is a picture of the wood bison. And again, it has more square hump. And I don't think you and I would want to meet this fellow somewhere. They were mainly up in Alaska, in the southern parts of Canada. The reason why I mention these because this was the huge staple of for food, clothing, everything, the utilities that that the Native Americans used. So just looking at this uh, wood bison or the American bison, the buffalo, there was so much to the need to have these. Bisons had keen mental discernments as pathmakers that paved the way for railroads to the Pacific. Some include the Cumberland Gap through the Blue Ridge Mountains in Upper Kentucky, heavily traced across the Ohio River at the falls of the Ohio and ran west, crossing the Wabash River near Vincennes, Indiana. The migration habits of the bison were considered a consistent blessing for food and survival of all Native American Indians in the United States and parts of Canada. Mainali only explained this migration as one of the greatest blessings as every tribe knew when and expected the bison to migrate to their lands as they always showed up. The people killed and butchered using every part of the buffalo as it was 
a seasonal blessing. The Navajo, Apache, and other Southwest tribes traveled for the migration of the bison as they returned in another northerly pattern. Every tribe knew these migration habits. Again, they were needed for vi vital survival essentials like food, clothing, and more. Hides would be tanned with their hair on for warm winter robes or scraped and used for clothing or teepee covers. Of course, there was also the deer, the antelope, elk, moose, and fox, etc. As we look at different regions, we will find different varieties of clothing. In warmer climates, such as the Southwest, very little clothing was worn, like breech cloths. In colder climates, there were leggings and skirts, dresses and tunics for men. In extreme subarctic with extreme cold temperatures, the animal furs and leather for trousers, hooded jackets, and insulated boots were sewn with their personal decorations. Grandma is showing you samples of clothing. Now these would be the Plains Indian clothing. Look how beautiful. Grandma wouldn't mind looking really wonderful in this white buckskin. If any of you want to make an offer to buy one for me, here I am. Navajo clothing for both men and women initially was deerskin for shirts and skirts. The men later wore cotton or velvet shirts with no collars, breeches below the knee, and moccasins. Women gradually wore the squaw dress made of plain dark blankets.